Peace family, this is Shofar from Pro Show Energy Work. I'm here to talk to you today about the science of fiction. The purpose of this video is to, uh, or the intention of this video is to learn, uh, L-E-A-R-N, to, to learn so that we can evolve, so that we can aspire to reach new levels and be new beings. And uh, the purpose is to break down some of the things that are going on in Hollywood, you know, some of the, the, the symbols, um, I feel like now more than ever, there's um, an uptick in how much the message that we as human beings are God beings, um, you know, goddesses and God being God men, and uh, that message is being pumped out in a lot of Hollywood shows right now. And if we don't have our third eye open and we're not aware, uh, we may overlook it and just kind of dismiss it. So that's the purpose of the video is to break down a couple of those different things that are out there and uh, just so that you can have more inner over and understanding and, in your journey. And um, so with that, I'm gonna take a moment for just a brief breath to take a moment to bring our energy into this moment. So closing our eyes and breathing in and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out, good. And so I'm going to start off with looking at the, the term science fiction and breaking down both of those words. So first off, the word science comes from uh, Greek or Latin roots that mean to know. And another interesting, um, uh, you know, branch of the word or meaning of the word is to separate or divide. Is to separate or divide. So we can look at current culture. We can see that science has been something... Um, you know that has allowed us to know more about nature uh, we sometimes like to think of ourselves as being so intelligent but the trees that you see behind me is a butterfly right here in front of me um, going from the caterpillar to the butterfly all of that is innate intelligence that's already in nature you know so man at best you know um, human beings at best women at best what we're doing as scientists when we look at things is we're becoming uh, to a place where we can know the science that is already in nature naturally, you know? Um, uh, now, you know, artificial intelligence and stuff, that's us trying to get to a place as human beings to actually start being able to cre create an intelligence that can operate on its own. But up to that point, um, any of the different scientific uh, breakthroughs that we can think of are more or less us being able to understand intelligence that is already there some may call that intelligence God you know um, so but science again is to know or to divide and we can see where science has definitely been used to create the believer and the non-believer right the the people who the atheists and the people who don't believe in God and then those who do and there's this big divide and where I, I actually feel that science um, can be a tool to connect all of that to connect us to nature in a deeper way, in a deeper understanding, and allow us to be able to interact with her, with that energy, at a higher level. Um, so, and let's take a look at the word fiction. Fiction is um, something that is invented or imagined in the mind. Um, uh, it is something that is invented or imagined in the mind, and it's something that is formed out of clay to build. That is fiction. That is fiction. So. If we put those two words together, well, first off, let's break down fiction a little bit more. So I like that, 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 that one uh, saying about to build. Um, so when we go into our imagination, we are actually building things. And a lot of us have this idea that, you know, imagination is like, um, I don't know, like this stuff of, of children, of childhood, uh, a childlike uh, toy or something, something to play with. The truth is, though, any of the major inventions that we can think of, you know, whether it be a car, a plane, a train, you know, um, all of these different things started off in the imagination of someone. They start off as the as an imagined thing that did not it did not exist in the 3D realm in this physical realm of molecules and atoms and everything. It did not exist there. It existed at a place or a higher rate, uh, you know. Um, of subatomic particles or you know sub subatomic particles it existed at that rate of vibration 
and we picked up on the frequency and we become the quote unquote inventor of what it, whatever it is. But these things, um, so that is the process and imagination is that process to which we do that, where we take and we make ourselves, we put ourselves in a receptive mode or sometimes we just spontaneously get a download, so to speak, of, um, of information and then we are able to get the steps or the know-how how to bring something into fruition here in the 3D realm. And for some people, you may not think that that's the process, but I, um, we, we each are entitled to, you know, think our, think, think whatever we want. But um, I, I, I find it very interesting that someone as adept of it at inventing as uh, Nikola Tesla, um, who the, the cars, the electric cars that we see on the street today, made by Elon Musk. Um, Nikola Tesla described his process of inventing similar to what I just explained. He more or less said that he wasn't the inventor, if you will, that they weren't necessarily coming from what we would call Nikola Tesla or his persona or his ego. They were coming from somewhere else and he was receiving the ideas. That was his perception of what was going on when he was coming up with all these blueprints and schematics. If you look him up, he had plenty of patents. Um, he had ideas or actually a working model for wireless electricity wireless electricity so not having cables where we would have to you know put our phone into uh, to get charged up or having to uh, you know somehow or another be connected with uh, lines that go in the ground or you know power lines or whatever he had a working model supposedly of wireless electricity there's a woman that's working on it now using sound to, to be able to give us wireless electricity, wireless power. Anyway, that's what the sun is. So it goes without saying, but I won't go too, down, too much down that path, uh, that path, but that's another video. But anyway, we um, are able to invent these things in our mind. And so when we put science and fiction together, or as I like to say, the science of fiction, science of fiction is being able to take our imagination and use it in a scientific way to create our reality. And so what this video is about is going into understanding, understanding, and overstanding that we have been somewhat manipulated by those who know how to use science and fiction and science fiction at a very high level. So first I want to speak about D.W. Griffith's uh, monument in uh, Hollywood. Uh, there's a like a big archway or arch in um, in Hollywood, off of Hollywood Boulevard, I believe, and you can see it from like the Lowe's the Lowe's Hotel there. You can see it from a couple of other places, and um, it's huge archway. And um, I was trying to think of um, where that was and everything, so I looked it up because I, I I know that you could see it off of the boulevard. Come to find out that it is a monument for D. W. Griffith, and when you do your research on who D. W. Griffith is, he's the man who is credited with coming up with the first major Hollywood um, movie, you know, movie, moving picture, movie. Uh, and that first major movie uh, was three hours long and it was originally called The Klansman, as in the Ku Klux Klansman. And later they renamed it uh, The Birth of a Nation. The Birth of a Nation. Um, now, how interesting that the first major movie of Hollywood was The Klansman. Maybe that's coincidental. I don't think so. I think there's a correlation or connection uh, between um, Hollywood and the idea of putting different ideas in our minds. So if you go in and you even do a little bit of research about the nature of that movie, it was propaganda basically to get black folks killed, more or less. Uh, something to ramp or amp up uh, 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 white folks um, killing and prejudice um, and racism against people of color in this nation and, and in this world. And so that was what the movie The Klansman was basically, was uh, propaganda. And, uh, and that was the, f the first major Hollywood movie and they have a monument to this dude, D.W. Griffin, to this day in 2020, they still have a monument to this motherfucker in Hollywood um, and here's the interesting thing or another interesting thing about it it's an archway it's like a big beautiful archway that has Sumerian or Babylonian um, 
uh, like cuneiform or uh, writing hieroglyphs on it, and uh, the, the the there's pictures of these beings on there, and they look like they're giving a offering. Look like they're giving an offering, and these beings, when you start to do your research and everything, they are called Anunnaki. And we'll get more deeper into that in a moment. Now, from this archway, if you're standing in the plaza, this, where this, um, where this uh, archway is, it's like a mall. It's like a, a, a archway. Into, uh, you go into the mall uh, there off of Hollywood Boulevard, and, you know, it has regular shopping centers and everything. You go into that, that, through that archway to get to the mall. Here's the thing about that is you can see from, if you're standing in the mall, you can see the Hollywood sign from that archway. It, they have these connection with the Anunnaki and D.W. Griffith. More on that. So there's another place called the Citadel off of the 5 Freeway. If you're going north to LA, it's going to be on your right. If you're going south on the 5 Freeway, it's on your left. But either way, the Citadel is another mall and it has an Assyrian or Sumerian uh, Meso uh, how you say it? Mesopotamia. Um, it has, uh, you know, that that region. Uh, it has artwork from that that area of the world, ancient art form. And again, you see this theme of Anunnaki. So when so if you're going up the freeway, you see that they have the uh, they have five or six statues, and they have the body of the lion and the head of the king, and uh, with wings, and these are basically another depiction of the Anunnaki and uh, it's also at another uh, mall this is a major the Citadel is a, a mall off of the 5 freeway they are facing west which means that their back is to the Sun rising and their face is to the Sun set and the word set coming from the ancient Egyptian the God who opposed light or the um, the one who tests the beings of light. Well, they're not. They're, they're, these these statues are not looking at the sun coming up as they're coming up. They're looking at and paying homage to the sun going down. And this is what you have to go through if you're going north into LA. You pass the Citadel. If you're on the five freeway, which is the main vein, um, going into uh, uh, LA, you pass the five freeway with it being on your right and them looking at the sun setting. Now, interesting that there's two times that we see the Anunnaki being connected to commerce and to these malls. So what is that about? Um, what I believe is that these, those who know the code, those who understand this reality at a higher level, the reason why these statues are at places of commerce, because these are places of exchange of energy. These are places of exchange of energy. These are ways of... Uh, basically if you look at the show American Gods um, these are ways for uh, beings who understand this reality at a different level to be able to um, garner more energy for themselves or to get more attention uh, for themselves in some way so D.W. Griffin Griffith connected to the Klansmen connected to birth of the nation um, you know racism and talking about American gods let's go into that in that show they have a depiction of a being that they call uh, a genie or a jinn he's a jinn this is where we get the word genie from sidebar that's where we get the word gene from is that you know you rub the lamp um, and you can get three wishes uh, the lamp being a phallic symbol um, so if you rub uh, the, the, the our phallus um, and you bring up the kundalini you bring up the sensual sexual energy um, you're now able to grant wishes you know yourself though you being that God being but anyway in that show there's a genie and um, if you start to do your research the jinn or genie the Anunnaki these are all names for uh, what the Bible uh, calls the Nephilim or the some call them the Elohim the fallen, the fallen angels. 
Los Angeles, the Angels. Just add, if you look at Los, L-O-S, which is Spanish for the, but if you add a T to it, Lost Angels, the place of the fallen. I do not believe that it is coincidence that um, D.W. Griffith's movie uh, and his monument is in Hollywood and that it's associated with the fallen or the jinn or the Nephilim or the, the Elohim, you know, the fallen angels, the Anunnaki. Many different names, different cultures call them, but those, the, 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 those who came down from heaven in ships or chariots or however you want to imagine it, but they came down here with high science and high knowledge and knew how to do different things to manipulate human beings. Another thing about Hollywood, if you do your research on that, the holly tree, where we get the word Hollywood, the wood of the holly tree, uh, the berries of it used to be used by the Druids um, uh, to go into trance or to cast spells, you know? And so Hollywood is a form of spell casting with the images. Our minds work similar, our thoughts, the way that we see moving pictures in our mind works similar to a movie. It works similar to us looking on the phone and scrolling through Instagram. That's similar to how our minds work. And so it's a form of mind control. It's a form of mind control. Let's go deeper into it though. Maybe, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So let's, let's go a little bit deeper into uh, or give a little bit more angles on it. So when you look at, uh, there's a show that came out 2019 called Watchmen. Watchmen. Uh, it has Regina King in it. And um, it's based on a comic book, a graphic novel that came out, I think, in the 80s or 90s. And um, really dope book. And they made a movie out of it. And now they, this is a spinoff or a continuation of the story. Um, and it's called Watchmen. It's on HBO. Uh, came out in 2019. Sidebar, uh, how interesting that one of the main themes of the story is people wearing masks. Now, 2019, Corona wasn't around yet or hadn't hit that level of prominence, right? How interesting that they were wearing masks in the show in, 20, in the fall of 2019. And for those who know and are aware, that's a form of predictive, um, basically predictive prophecy or telling us, giving us ready for something that's getting ready to come down the pike or getting us to feel energy around something. This has happened a lot with Hollywood. But anyway, the, sh the show's name is called Watchmen. Now, very interesting thing is that another name for the Nephilim, the Elohim, the, the Fallen, the, the Lost Angels, the Anunnaki, another name for them are the Watchers. The Watchers. Those who from heaven were watching men and some of the men started to lust, as the story goes in the Bible anyway, some of those beings started to lust after these women because they got that WAP down here and um, these beautiful, luscious, women of all these different cultures and hues, the hue beings, right? Um, and even from heaven, man, they, you know what I'm saying? A masculine being up in heaven even is gonna want a little piece of that. So as the story goes, they came down here, took flesh uh, so that they could cohabit with, the, with these women. Some say that that's where the, 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 the giants and all these different uh, creatures and beings, you know, half man, half, cre uh, uh, half animal came from. Who knows? At this point, it's all myth and stuff. With that being said, though, the watchers or the watchmen, those who watched men, I guess I actually watched women, but um, but those the, the watchmen was another name for those those beings. So the show is called Watchmen, uh, and the uh, show has a major theme about watches. Now you can go and look at ancient cuneiform or statues, the Anunnaki or these different beings are shown wearing watches. I don't, I don't wear one, but they, they're shown, you look on their arm and it's like this wristband with a little circle and it ha seems to have little, it looks like a watch. Some say that it was the Anunnaki or these Nephilim, these fallen, 
angels who, these lost angels who set our minds into time, who have us set up in this construct of time and with an understanding about times and minutes and things like that. The, the, one of the major flyers for it shows Regina King with a mask on and it says, it's time, it's time. So going back to the show American Gods, American Gods has a theme where they're basically showing the old gods and the new gods battling for the minds or the attention of us who beings. The old gods being gods like Odin or the Jinn, the genie, the Anunnaki, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, different, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kali from the Hindu um, religion, uh, you know, different forms of Jesus, some of these different Babylonian gods and everything. Like, so you see different gods from different cultures represented in this show. And they are, they are battling with what they call the new gods. The uh, Mr. Mr. World, which is basically the World Bank, or um, and then you have money, you have technology, uh, you have media, which later becomes social media. These are the new gods who are fighting for our attention, for our devotion, for our our praise. Basically, the way that you praise the gods is through attention, and so. That's what that show is about. That in that show, you have a theme of uh, the main character, Shadow Moon, which is a brother, a black man. Um, he, you kind of get the sense that he may be a god as well, but he doesn't know it. He's forgotten. When you look at, and by the way, I meant to tell you at the beginning of, the, of this show, it's going to be spoilers in this uh, coming up here. So um, if you've been watching it up to this, up to this point, and uh, you don't want spoilers on Watchmen, you know, um, American Gods, Lovecraft Country, stop here. So in Watchmen, um, one of the things that goes on in that show is that Regina King's character, um, she comes, uh, her grandfather finds out that there's a secret organization that basically is the Ku Klux Klan, more or less, and that clan or that group, they have a secret weapon that they've been using to terrorize uh, black folks or to terrorize people of color. And it's the, um, the code name for that is Cyclops. It's Cyclops. When you come to find out in future episodes that the Cyclops, and this is like the symbol of it, something like that, um, we know about D.W. Griffith and the Klansmen, or Birth of the Nation, see the association there. Maybe it's just coincidental. Um, in that show, it goes on further that the most powerful being that's known in that show, a, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Manhattan, um, he is a god, basically, more or less. His symbol is, uh, he puts on his head a dot with another dot, his symbol is the hydrogen uh, atom. So he's one of the most advanced beings known, but yet he's, yet he's using one of the simplest, hydrogen is uh, said to be the most simple of all the elements, with one atom, one proton, and one neutron. So here you have the most advanced being using as his own symbol the most simple. If you look at the atom too, though, of hydrogen, it also looks kind of like a watch or a clock. And so we see that one of the major powers of Dr. Manhattan is that he can bend and manipulate time, that he's a god. And long story short, again, spoiler alert, so do not listen to the following if you're interested in the show Watchmen. Um, he, uh, Dr. Manhattan falls in love with Regina King and wants to deci he decides that he wants to become uh, a human being, a regular person, so that he can forget because his experience of time is that he experiences all time is now. Not past, not present, not future. He experiences everything now, which quantum physics says is probably more like really what it is. Our limited minds, we see time uh, in a linear, um, you know, from A to B to Z, you know, in, in a line. Whereas the way, another way of experiences is like a DVD 
where all of the scenes are on the DVD, our laser, when we put it in a DVD player, it plays it in a sequential linear fashion from the beginning of the movie to the quote unquote end of the movie. Um, but the truth is, is that all of the scenes are there and we could play all of the scenes at one time if we had a laser big enough. That is more like what reality really is. So anyway, I say all that to say that Dr. Manhattan is one of the most powerful beings and long story short, he's hiding out and has forgotten that he is a God being. He's, uh, he put a chip in his brain uh, so that he could forget that he was a God being and have an experience of just being a regular Hugh being on this planet so he could fall in love with Regina, you know, experience time. And I believe that's what happens, has happened to many of us is that we've come down this motherfucker and we've forgotten who we are, that we are God beings. Check it out that, that Dr. Manhattan uh, is hiding now in the body or has forgotten that he, he is a God being and he has, he's taken on the form of a black man in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So again, we see Hollywood having a theme of uh, letting, and, and, and to let it be said this, the most lowly amongst us right now are the, are the, uh, on this planet, right, are black folks, the way we've been shitting on for quite a while. Um, we're amongst the, the, the lowliest, let's just put it that way. We're not gonna you know, compare tragedies and atrocities to see who's the lowliest, but we're amongst one of the lowliest. So if we're amongst the lowliest, it can be said that if we are God beings, then we all are God beings, no? Regardless of our color or creed or religion or sex or whatever. So anyway, that's the implications of this science fiction that's being put out there. For one more example, there's another show called Lovecraft Country. And in Lovecraft Country, um, the main character, Atticus, AKA Tick, um, and it's another HBO show, um, he comes to find out by episode one or two that his family is connected to um, this, uh, that, that they are connected in some way to a group called the Dawn of the Ancient, Dawn of the Ancient Dawn, Ancient Dawn or some shit like that, whatever. And um, uh, they're basically, again, the clan. And the clan has been using magic or spells to wreak havoc on black folks. Another show with the same theme. What do they call the, the headmaster of the Ku Klux Klan? They call him the Grand Dragon or the Grand Wizard. Magic is another form of science. You know, though, you know, on the movie Thor, he says that I come from a place where, you know, magic and science are the same thing. So this high science or this high magic um, are things that have been used, whether it be from subliminal messaging in shows, um, you know, and different things to make people think that they are less than, or it be 5G networks now with, um, you know, literally in the air is porn and violence and horror movies and nigga you ain't shit being played all the time right now in the airwaves that are going through all of our cells. These things are literally in the air. High science, high magic that have been used to keep people at a certain level of consciousness, to put our mask on and to obey and not question things. So these are some of the things uh, uh, I wanted to point out with this video is that um, the science of fiction though, in a nutshell, is that we can use our imagination, our fiction, our own ability to tell stories, our own ability to go into our mind uh, and our body will not know the difference. If we go deep enough into trance, we can program and play with this reality. You know, we can play with the science of it. You are science and you can do it on your own. You're spell casting with your words or your projector. You know, so the projector, you know, and they show uh, in Hollywood, they have people doing the third eye and all of that. And people say that it all is the Illuminati and devil and all of that. True. And 
is an ancient symbol that people from light can use as well. And so using your own projector, that projector, the movie projector is just really uh, playing along with or mimicking what you are capable of doing on your own. And so that's the wrapping up, I'll say that, you know, and we've seen themes with like the Matrix, with Morpheus uh, giving, uh, you know, offering uh, Neo the pills. And then we have this movie Project Power that was on uh, Netflix with uh, Jamie Foxx. Uh, and again, a the theme of coming into your power with the, the pill. The pill, these pills and Hollywood's obsession, uh, you know, also what was the one, uh, Limitless uh, with Bradley Cooper and being able to tap into your power uh, using um, uh, taking a pill. Uh, besides making uh, a lot of, usually white folks, uh, a whole lot of fucking money with pharmaceuticals um, and pills, beyond just that, uh, the, the, um, the fascination with Hollywood and these different stories with the, with the, the pill is uh, the pineal. Look at the word pill and pineal. You can, the word pill is in pineal, just add an L at the end, and you have the pineal, the pill. Um, and anything, that, any pills that we take that we're introducing into our bloodstream, into our body, there's receptors already in us for those chemicals, which means, and that wasn't based on us having a fucking pharmaceutical company make up a pill for us. No, the reason why we have the receptors is because we can produce the hormone or the, the substance for those receptors. You don't need the that goddamn pill. You can use the pill or the plant medicine um, to tap into it, you know, it's a quick fix, but to rely on it. And so I say all that to say that the pineal and its connection with the project, with the projector, um, using our, our third eye to project the reality, to play with time, um, to bend time and to, 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 to do that, this is your ability. And uh, so stepping into that, remembering that we are God, remembering that you are God, and stepping into that is where we are now as a species. So lastly, in wrapping up on that, uh, I just want to say that, you know, um, if that, you know, if that seems far-fetched to you and everything, you know, one people, one, one way of saying it is like, you, you know, definitely anytime with, with like a clothing or song types of music, um, food, there's trends, right? And so it, it, it may be trendy to just have all these different superhero movies, right? You know, Marvel and all the different superhero movies, you know, uh, that that's a trend. And I can see where there's like this, maybe it's the point of, uh, you know, kind of nauseating now, like how many superhero movies there are. Um, you know, and you sift through it and a lot of them are not good anymore uh, because it's just so many of them. That's one way of looking at it. And I think also simultaneously uh, what we're seeing is the reason why we see more of them is because we're having a grand or collective uh, remembrance that we are divine beings and that we have these different latent powers or talents and abilities. The word uh, Raul Nefer Amin points out that the word talent and the word latent are the same word. You're just changing around the, the, changing around the letters. So we all have latent talents and abilities, you know, uh, to different degrees and everything. And so I think personally, the reason why we have uh, so many superhuman movies is just because it makes money. Ultimately, you know, that's, that's, that's one reason. Of course, you can't fucking uh, get around that. But another reason is because collectively we're stepping back into remembering who we are. And anytime we're seeing, um, you know, you can look at even a, mo a show like Snowfall, which is about the crack epidemic. And basically based on uh, how crack came to be, you know, the CIA's involvement and everything in it, a show like Snowfall even has played around with the idea of quantum physics and the multiverse and multi possibilities. Even a show like that has had an episode on that. So you can imagine that there's something collectively going on. There's a grand remembrance. You know, and you look at, again, spoiler alert, you look at uh, the end of like Avengers Endgame and maybe I'll do a video on that as well. 
And again, there was the theme of playing with time again or Ant-Man and, and quantum physics going into the quantum realm. These are things that we keep seeing the themes of and there's a reason for it. So with that, I just wanted to uh, th throw that out there for y'all, a breakdown um, of some of these different things that we're seeing in Hollywood. And again, it brings us to a deeper knowledge of ourself. Um, if you like this video, please share it, please uh, subscribe, um, you know, and, and leave a comment down below. And again, I'm Shofar from Full Show Energy Work. I do uh, energy work uh, with couples and singles. Um, uh, me and my love, we do, you know, we do energy work with couples, and then I also do it with singles. Um, uh, I do coaching for men uh, called Chi Up. So if you want to learn more about how to do energy work and sensuality and everything, I uh, do um, I have online programs for that, and then you can also book me for one-on-ones. Uh, I have a book, Soul, Sacred Orgasmic Living, that goes more into that. I have, uh, you know, of course, the podcast and this, this YouTube channel with a lot of different videos of either me speaking or uh, also other people going into their knowledge base and um, uh, have a series of different online uh, workshops, uh, hip hop kundalini and or uh, intimate relating again for couples. Um, so I have a, different, a lot of different tools and, and things out there if you're wanting to go deeper into you know, consciousness and sensuality and the connection between the two. Uh, got you covered and if you like this video uh, please look at uh, maybe uh, you know helping out uh, and sharing some of the abundance uh, with my um, patreon so with that I, I appreciate y'all coming through thank you for taking the time uh, to listen and uh, keep that sex in your life uh, keep shining keep evolving and do so exponentially peace so I forgot to say but um we put all of this together if you take those three uh, shows right you know uh, American Gods uh, Lovecraft Country and uh, The Watchmen if you take those three so if you take those three shows and you look at their names and then also maybe some of their subtitles or uh, the messages they have on their their uh, ads is American Gods it's time to take back your legacy because you look at, uh, you know, Lovecraft Country, it says, take back your legacy. So one of the ways to take back our legacy is to understand who we are and understand that the science of fiction, of uh, the power of our imagination, of our pioneer and our pituitary glands, and that we have the, time, the ability to play with time in certain ways, uh, all of these different things are some of the things that we are being told to remember at this time.